What? Action! You're back at the Friday Night Chips Apparatus. Congratulations to this audience. You made it to Wednesday, but not yet Friday. Let me explain what's going down today. Wednesday is a sports talk octagon throwdown. Today, it's Celtics versus Warriors, the current event, okay? Then Friday, it's going to be B-Shaw's boys, okay? And guess what? B-Shaw has some pretty cool boys. But guess what? Give me six months' time. My boys will be just as cool. That's why we're starting off small. Number two is the shirt, right? Guards giveaway. I'm changing it to guards pets. It's someone who's been standing in the breach, reposting. That's the great Alex Malloy. Guard picked you, Malloy, okay? So you won that. It's not a giveaway. It's guard picks who's standing in the breach. Number two related to that, I wanted to say something about standing in the breach, okay? We have the great Seamus Keeney on, on the fan side today. It's fans versus athletes. The great Seamus Keeney, the Bostonian, okay, the Irishman. And let me tell you something. Um, I need all the younger guys in Pike to repost this. All the younger guys, okay? You've seen Seamus Keeney angry. You've seen guard angry. You don't want to see it again. So let me repeat what's going down. It's the Wednesday night octagon, okay? We're talking, it's guard and Seamus, the fan Celtics, little Connor Davis and Bryson as the Warriors. Let's get into the action. The first thing we're well, doing hold on, is hold on. I got something to say. I got something to say. First off, okay, I, hold the line. Hold the line. Well, first of all, thanks for blowing out my eardrum. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Secondly, let's go. I'm ready. Come on, we're ready. Okay, let's 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 ride. All so right, we're starting off. Connor Davis, set a three or a, a three minute timer. All right, I got you. Okay, so. Seamus, you're a lifelong Bostonian, okay? You stand behind the Boston Celtics, the good and the bad, just like Napoleon said. Uh, first off, we only have three minutes. Give me number one, Boston sports. Number two, give me the numbers, why we're winning game six and game seven. The number three, tell me why the Warriors are illegitimate. All right, Gord, uh, I'm going to start off. I've... Uh... Uh, in terms of my Celtics fandom, uh, there, there may be no greater victory for me as, in terms of sports fandom than 2008. This means the world to me. I got to watch these guys grow. I got to see Jason Tatum get drafted, grow, become a first-team All-NBA guy. Jalen Brown, he's not there yet. I got to see him mold into an All-Star, and now they have us in the finals. Why do I think that we can win game six and come back from a 3-2 deficit? I believe it starts with our defense. Um, in terms of turnovers, when we turn the ball over more than 16 times, this playoffs were one and seven. When we don't, we're 13 and two. That's because people have to get into their half court offense versus us. They have to run plays and they have to beat us one on one. And that is something that is not very possible versus Boston T versus Boston defense in terms of historically their defensive rating. The second half of the season has been with all the great defensive teams all time. Um, the Warriors have done a great job of exposing us in terms of turnovers. They, they get out in transition really well. They pass the ball better than anyone in the NBA. And that's the reason we're in a 3-2 hole right now. The key to winning game six, one game at a time. It's not two games. It's one game at a time. We need to win game six right now. We're not even thinking about game seven. The key to winning game six for this team is not turning the basketball over. If we can have less than 15 turnovers in this game, you bet you're sweet bottom dollar that we will be heading to fucking San Francisco for game seven. I can guarantee that. Take care of the basketball. This core, Ime Doka, I believe, everyone here in Boston believes, we are fired up. We are fired up for game Let's six. Ride. Fired up! Yeah, Let me tell wait, you, for the city, the city Boston, is going Boston, to be Boston. flooded tomorrow. <laughs> I will be in the socks at one o'clock, and I will be at the bars until tip. You yeah, can this, bet your strap that yeah, everywhere in Boston, it will be green be all day. The Warriors <laughs> don't want what's coming to them. I promise you, it will be a different storyline in the TD Garden tomorrow night. Man, holy smokes. This dude is the, fired up, and he's going to be... The athletes are wetting the themselves. The, the, the fans are, are thanks, Preston. 
Jordan, Got 20 more seconds, Jordan, God. What are you going to – like, what are, how are you going to follow that up, Jordan? Okay, here's what I'm going to say is look at the Boston Celtics. Look at Bryson Shaw's game, fearlessness, grand determination. Look at the Celtics game. They stopped MJ in their tracks in the bird days. Okay, they stopped MJ in his tracks in the bird days. Uh, they stopped LeBron in his younger days, right? The Paul, um, Paul Pierce, Garnett, Allen team. They stopped LeBron in his tracks. And then look at um, Bill Russell. He stopped Jerry West in his tracks, okay? West went to six straight finals. I don't Bill care Russell. about those teams. I care about the That's teams. built yeah. into the Celtics' <laughs> DNA, my friend. That's tradition. built into the tradition. Celtics' DNA, my friend. So that's your argument is tradition. Uh, dude, you, Seamus gave you the numbers. Stop. Stop. Seamus gave you the numbers. I want to hear your numbers. Okay, you want to hear my numbers? Seamus <laughs> gave you the numbers. Hey, Gord, Gord. Gord's here for my numbers right now. I'm I'm telling you what's good with this team. Gord's telling you that he has a great knowledge of the history of basketball and that in terms of the Celtics, Boston, as a franchise, as a city, we breed winners. We preach winning. Nothing short of a championship. There's 17 banners in our building that the Golden State Warriors will be looking up at. And all we care about is 18. It's 18 or bust. It's always been that way. And that's the bottom line that that Jordan's trying to get to right now. And Bryson, one more thing I'll say about Boston. Watch any Mark Wahlberg movie. You'll see the grit and determination. No, there's look, there's no denying that the grit and the determination is there. But I don't see it in this Celtics team recently. I think they're playing soft. I think Tatum is is looking pretty soft. You know, Jalen Brown, he look, they just look soft to me. You know, you're not okay. on the state when you're playing soft. I actually, I, I don't actually see, got. I don't see. Here. I don't see the Boston toughness running through the Celtics players' veins. Okay, let me. I got one thing for Bryson. Bryson, you talked about going into the Lions' den. Uh, the last time we spoke, okay? Jason Tatum was clearly in the Lions then, and he got a little bit rattled last game. Could that not jack him up going into Boston, knowing that he wet himself a little bit? Now he's like, shit, it's I got to prove six. myself. It's game six. I've been waiting for him to take over the series. It's game six. So yep. if he doesn't do it tomorrow, then he's not doing it at all because it'll be done, and the Boston people like Seamus will be crying. Yep. Agreed. Okay, let's hear let's hear a Warriors pitch. All right, All right. All right, I got you guys. So you really think Steph Curry, the greatest three-point shooter of all time, is not gonna hit a three tomorrow night? He is dropping trays all night tomorrow, sending Boston home, crying, crying. Andrew Wiggins, all these dogs. That he's balling. Clay Thompson's back. You better watch out tomorrow night. Listen, I agree with that. Look, Steph is the superstar for the Warriors. He had an off – he's been balling, but last night or the night before, he had an off game. He had an off game. But who stepped up? Andrew Wiggins. Who stepped up – who has stepped up for the Celtics? Nobody. Seamus, let's hear it. Look, I, I totally – I agree with you guys. And, I, and I, I'll touch on the Steph thing in a second. In terms of this Celtics team and no one stepping up, I think Jalen Brown was that guy. He was the reason – it was 2-2 originally. He stepped up the first four games. Tatum was an absolute no-show. Looked like a shell of himself. I, I actually tweeted, follow my Twitter account, Seamus Keeney 33 Sorry for the plug, Gord. Nice promo. I had to that's, plug that's myself like, there. Yeah, I, uh, I, I actually oh, tweeted. Oh, yeah, and, and by the way, this show is brought to you by Guard Sparks Cards and the <laughs> rapper, not Bernard. That's not Bernard on iTunes. Right. Make sure to follow not Bernard and, and give, his, give his music a listen. It's, it's truly great stuff. Uh, aside from that, I, I mean, Tatum was nowhere to be found. In game, in game five, I thought, I thought he played a lot better. I thought he didn't get a lot of help. He turned the ball over too much. Well, I mean, we're going to have to be better across the board. They, they've been talking about this in interviews. It's all about fighting, this toughness, this team. They're going to fight. In terms of Steph, I think you saw those, those huge Steph numbers. We, we chose to let Steph shoot the ball a little bit. Ime Udoka basically stressed. You saw the drop coverage. Everyone's like, what the hell are they doing? Ime was like, we're not going to let everyone else beat us. We're going to make Steph shoot off the dribble. It didn't work. He's the greatest shooter in the world. Greatest shooter ever. What are you going to do? So we decided to double him, hedge him on screens. He wasn't getting those open looks that he got. Shots weren't falling. And Andrew Wiggins took over. So I'm really interested to see what the Celtics are going to do. I'm sure we're going to see a mix of trapping Steph while also allowing other guys to kind of do their thing. If, if Clay's going to beat us, I think Clay's going to beat Wait, us. Wait, hold on, Seamus. Sorry to interrupt you real quick. But uh, what game What game are they going to play? Like, what's the next game they're playing? What, what number of the series are they about to be? Game six is tomorrow night. 
All right. Have you ever heard of somebody called Game Six Clay? Have you ever heard of that man? I, I have. That's, I, all, I've, 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 that's all I have to say. Bad man. Bad man. Bad. Okay, dude. Man. Clay Thompson was wetting himself when he heard Boston fans say a curse word. Come yeah. on. <laughs> Yeah, also, I'd like to touch on that clip as well. Bryson, that's absolute bullshit from you that you're supporting Clay on that. You've never heard someone say fuck you in an arena before? Are you kidding me? This is professional sports. You're coming to a city known for being drunk degenerates who swear every other word. You're going to get yelled at. You're going to get cursed at. You might get hit. Like, that's going to happen. It's it's just Listen, it, you're going into a place like New York, Boston, Philly, those environments. You're gonna hear stuff like that. You gotta I, tune it out. Seeing him cry like a baby over that. You're a professional athlete making millions of dollars on the biggest stage in the world. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. That's all I got to say. I, I would I, love if I saw if I saw Clay Thompson on the road before Game Six walking by me. I would look him in the face and I would say, "Fuck you, Clay." That's exactly <laughs> what I would say. To him. Guys, I hope man. the rest of Boston. I know the rest of Boston feels the exact same way. Man, when Boston, you stand behind Boston sports, you stand behind them. Oh man, there is no doubt about that. I'm seeing that. I'm seeing that. But in terms of that, from a football standpoint, I know the guys. The rowdier the, the environment you know, the better. So I didn't really see what he was saying about that, but he's still a baller and he's still game six clay. So that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, I'm definitely nervous about game six clay. That, that's definitely in my mind. I'm trying to push it off till tomorrow. Yeah, no, one thing I'll say is I've never liked Steph Curry personally. I always thought he was more of a show horse than a workhorse, right? You know, he's calling himself the kid from Akron. Oh, his dad you just call him a show horse? You know how many three-point shots? This guy has put up in the gym with the most team. ever, ever. All I'm saying is he ever. tries to play the underdog. You think he just too? rolls out of bed? You think he just one day rolled out of bed and started hitting all of his three point shots? I hear where you're coming from, Gordon. I hear where you're coming from. Oh my God. I agree. No, That's Steph Curry is an undersized NBA player. He's got to earn everything. He's, he's, he's got NBA work. worthy and he's earned his chops. He's NBA worthy and he's earned his chops. But it's not as impressive as some of the other guys. N name another guy. Um, uh, Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum, oh the kid from St. Louis. Oh the kid from St. Louis. Just a kid from St. Louis, dude. Those St. Louis kids, though, they're a different breed. They are tough, and I love St. Louis kids. They're tough. I don't know where the toughness has been in Jason Tatum, not going to lie. No, I'd, love to, see, I'd love to see some toughness enough. in game six. Yeah, he, I mean, he's a baller, but it's just not going to be enough. It hasn't been there. Hey, and we're, we live and die with we live and die on turnovers, and can Tatum show up? If Tatum shows up tomorrow, we take care of the ball. Bet your strap we will be heading back to San Francisco. So, Jordan that is a guarantee. Who is your dark horse MVP for the Celtics? For the Celtics, me? Both of you. Um, I think it has to be Jalen Brown. Um, I, that's not necessarily a dark horse. His odds are like pretty high though. I mean, obviously you think Celtics win the championship, Jason Tatum wins, um, MVP, but I, I personally, as a Celtics fan, think Jalen Brown has played much better this series other than game five. He absolutely shit the bed, but I think Jalen Brown is absolutely deserving of it. And that's the thing about Boston sports, Bryson and Connor is the MVP can go to anybody. It's such a unit and it's such a team. You look back, uh, Seamus mentioned the 08 NBA Finals. Like, Paul Pierce obviously balled against the Lakers that series, but but that could have gone to Kevin Garnett or Ray Allen. Absolutely. Yeah, but this is my point. Step, the best player on the Warriors played horribly, and they still beat Boston. Mm -hmm. They have yeah, that, so many that, people that can step up. They don't need look, Steph Curry, obviously. And we, it was we turned the ball over. We turned the ball over twenty times and missed nine free throws. That we'd handed them the game. I don't think we got outplayed. Personally, I don't think that they deserved to win that game. We handed it to them. It's all I'm about the show up. All Wiggins, about Wiggins outplayed Tatum and Jalen Brown, and we we wrapped that up in a little box and said, "Here you go." There's Listen, game five. Game six. Clay's dropping forty. It's going to be a twenty point victory for the Warriors. And Steph's having 10 threes. You're going to be in the streets, but you're going to be burning it down for losing. That's all I got to uh, say. My prediction, game six, I think I think that it's going to be an absolute bloodbath. I think Steph and Clay are both going to show up in a huge way. But I think Tatum and Jalen are going to outplay Steph and Clay 
I have the Celtics turning the ball over less than 10 times and I have us winning by eight to 10 points. We'll be heading back to the Bay. That's a gut feeling. And then when it gets back to the Bay, what do you you got from that? It's over if it goes back to the Bay. Once it gets back to the Bay, you know the saying, game seven, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Oh, who show, it's who shows just up. think about little Steph Curry wetting himself when LeBron came back three. Weeks. Hey, all I'm going to say is Steph Curry, known choke artist without Kevin Durant. Known choke artist. No, I agree. Would you, can, would you consider 3 2 and then losing the series a choke, though? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I'm just you, have two chances, you have two chances to close it out, one being on your home court. You choke. Right. And. And Seamus and I are rational. We know the Golden State Warriors might have a little bit more um, junta on the roster. Like, they got bigger names. They got more all-stars, but we're mm-hmm. grittier. We're scrappier. Yeah. Listen, hold on. Now, I know he hasn't been playing too well, but Draymond Green, he brings the energy. Who Absolutely. Is match- who is matching that energy on the Celtics? No one's able to. No, no the 12th able- man. No, tomorrow night. Man. Tomorrow night, the crowd, the Draymond's gonna have to match the crowd's energy. Wait, how tomorrow. many, how many guys are on the court at one time? <laughs> no, someone, someone's gonna die tomorrow. No, Gord, you're you're hitting home. It's yeah. it, Boston's Boston's home crowd adds adds seven guys to the court. It is the twelfth man. We're we're fucking Draymond's gonna have to match our energy tomorrow. Is what I'm saying. When it goes back for Game Seven in the Bay. Someone's going to have to step up and match Draymond's energy. He's a problem. He pisses me off every second I watch him. Man, these Boston fans. Whew. Jordan, you, you warned me, but these guys. Oh, I have totally no idea. I'm not it. even okay. drunk. Okay, guys, I think we passed <laughs> our three minutes each. That turned into chaos. That's what's going to happen in the sports talk octagon, yep. okay, when Guard has his boys on. Then Friday, it's B-Shaw's boys. But listen, Guard is going to be no fan of any athletes in the octagon. I'm telling you that now. Okay, Bryce is my brother. He's my own brand. I love him. He's coming back to feed the villages, do a show with his high school water boy. But in the octagon, <laughs> I'm throwing down with all of them. All of them. Okay? So we'll be back Jordan, Friday. Jordan, on, Make Jordan. sure you tune in. Because some if of you, Bryce's boys are studs. Jordan, I got, I got a few things. First off, if you were a UFC fighter, which we yeah. know you get your butt whooped, but let's say you were <laughs> – what, got song, grit. what song would you come out to? Uh, Beast. That's Beast by who? Beast by, I, I, I don't want to say the name of the band wrong, but I think it's called Nico Verga. All right. And uh, can we hear a little lyrics maybe? Stand tall for the beast of America. All right. Stand all right. tall for Okay, that's all I need to hear. That's all I need to hear. Okay. All or right. I might do um, Coming in Hot. Hot, hot. What's that song? Coming in hot. Okay. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, should we introduce or announce our guest for Friday or what? Announce your uh, – most definitely. This is all B-Shaw. This, these guests are mine. This is all B-Shaw, okay? okay so first, off, first off, this was a great conversation. Seamus, I appreciate you coming in. and You showed the Boston energy and the bloodline, which I really love. And, Connor, you know you're my boy. Um. <laughs> Connor, he's, a buck now. he's on the tour time watch list a beast he'll definitely be back on both these guys will definitely be back on but for friday's show um we are going to have ohio state linebacker tommy eichenberg rose bowl mvp and steel chambers uh will linebacker for ohio state so we're excited for that and uh, we'll keep it rolling and next week maybe we'll bring on the same two guys for the for the ufc thing i, I really enjoyed this all right, fellas. Thanks for having me, fellas. Oh, no problem. No yeah, problem. Thank you. <laughs>